Day one of Octiaver under the Hunter's Moon 740 Barovian calendar. One might expect a tale about heroes, people who are in the right place, at the right time, with the right tools, who rose to the occasion to defeat a terrible evil that plagued the land. One should also leave such thoughts behind. Every soul here was either born into the region or summoned to it. Their tools only made them more appealing. As for the rising to the occasion, our lives are governed by choice, if not your own. It was just another day at the independent university of artificers. Creatures of the most diverse races wander about, some rushing towards class, others running from them, others even calmly walking to lecture them. To whomever was watching and unaware of old news, no student deaths have ever happened in an explosion in one of the classrooms. One of these passers-by was Rehan Salim, a brownish-robed sorceress half-elf of dutiful birth and questionable morals. He finally arrived, comparing the name of the university with the one on his letter, with a sender named Professor Orson Lane. According to the professor, he had heard of Ray as a remarkable practitioner of magic, and would require his aid in capturing magical energy of the most diverse degrees of potency inside day-to-day -day items. After a brief search in the university grounds, he eventually saw a shady bearded man that identified himself as a Professor Orson after secretly hiding his name tag. He required him to register all possible information in a book of all items that he might find in his studies, given that, due to some problems back at the university, he would on occasion had to change his appearance, including his attitude and personality, and required something to hold himself to, a fixed point of his personality. Ray considered that he was indeed very strange, but following his newfound friend's steps, covertly agreed with squinted eyes. The professor left him a time and a place. After dinner, at the Squawking Goose, Rahan, still squinting his eyes, complies once again. He decided then to go explore the interior of the university and, as soon as he looked back to try and find this mysterious character, he was already gone, lost in the crowd of students and professors. Regulus Cor Leonis, a plated armored human cleric, was still disoriented by the instructions of his dragon goddess, Dolara. No matter how much he tried, no matter where he looked, he simply could not find this mythical Barovia he'd been told to. No one had ever heard of it, or any clues that he would find would mysteriously disappear. Despairing that he might fail his quest, and disappoint his ascendance of Corleonis, he gives up search for that day, and proceeds to find an open tavern. It was still early, yet the squawking goose was already with very inviting open doors. He sits, and asks for the best ale in the house. Professor Orson Lane, the hardly shaved, stylish and quite quirky infamous human artificer of the university, enters his favorite tavern as usual carrying his usual immense bag of book-holding, greeting Indrik, the tavern-keeper, with the usual please, while sitting in his usual corner with his usual books. He doesn't even notice the plated armored man sitting alone in the corner drinking to his faith, nor the brown-robed man entering behind him and looking to both these characters with squinted eyes. He sits down and begins rummaging through his bag when Rahan interrupts him, asking for his name, with squinted eyes. He delivers the letter, which the professor confused receives, but appreciates his own intelligence of looking for a new partner in his magical endeavors. He asks if Ray has any magical item with him, 
anything of elevated rarity to be explored, or anything unusual to the eye. Ray answers insipidly, but resoundingly with a... No. These three patrons of the old goose barely have any time to take in the fading light through the windows, given that they start to only show mist from the outside. In the very next moment, three tall men, wearing some very colorful clothing, awkwardly jovial expressions and pricey jewelry prance across the squawking goose. Indrik, having never seen such people, is speechless, but appreciative of the patronage. He prepares himself to greet the customers, which simply ignore him and sit around the plated armor warrior Regulus. Surprised by the strange act and not wanting to provoke them in what seemed to be a clearly outnumbered situation, he simply drags his hands down the table while listening to them. The three men tell him that their lord is in desperate need of assistance, if he could possibly go to the lands of Barovia. Hearing, for the first time, of these mythical lands through a person, Regulus feels as if suddenly he's closer to his target. The prancing man asks if he can go as soon as possible and tell him an old tale of their people saving a badly injured lord, and that since that day, their people have gained his respect. But now he once again required aid of some form, and requested their group to search for adventurers that seemed capable enough. Regulus, suspicious that everything he wanted was simply falling into his lap, but feeling the need to rise to the occasion and find the place that his goddess requires him to go, humbly accepts the task. Hearing this, they smile, give their thanks, and depart not before explaining to simply follow the road. At the same time, a much burlier man with the same clothing as the other three, yet clearly heavier and with an imposing presence and dark eyes, also enters the tavern and speaks to Ray and the professor. He simply says in an accented voice that he was sent to deliver them this message, and if they were creatures of honor, they would come to his master's aid at first light, given that it was not advisable to travel the Svalich woods at night. He then pulls from his tunic a sealed letter addressed to five people, two of them reading Raham Salim, and Orson Lane in beautiful flowing script. He drops the letter on the table, stating to take the west road from here some five hours march down the Svalich woods. There they would find his master in Barovia. Amid the silent stare of Indrik, the man strides to the bar and says to the wary barkeep to fill the glasses, one and all. Their throats are obviously parched. He then drops a purse heavy with gold on the bar and simply leaves. Rehan, the professor, and Regulus awkwardly discuss what just happened, as strangers would. It wasn't a very convincing story, but they begrudgingly agreed to find out what was happening and why a lord would require their aid. However, the professor required some time to prepare his traveling gear, so he asked if they could stay a night and leave in the morning. His preparations would include his old cane, a top hat, some new clothes, and last but not least, a good last cup of coffee from the machine he built while in the university. They accepted his terms, and in the morning, they left. Not at the same time, nor even the same place. The human ranger Brad Nipple wakes up from another one of his nightmares in the middle of the night. Once more, the vivid image of death lingers in his mind his family slain by the hands of werewolves a few years back. Without even thinking, his body twitches itself up and grabs his bow, pointing it at a source of noise. Seeing an unarmed, well-spoken half-orc barbarian who introduced himself as Bogdan Sitch. Brav, since the event became all too wary of these encounters in the wood, he immediately looked to the moon seeing it full. Preparing an arrow, he waits for whatever the half-orc has to say. Bogdan simply states that he is looking for werewolves. He has a history with them. Brad doesn't drop the bow, but lowers it slightly. Indeed, that was Brad's goal as well. 
Bogdan explains that not too long ago, a group of werewolves had created a very complicated issue with his clan. A very tense moment ensues between them both, but Bogdan convinces Brad that they are on the same side, hunting werewolves. Which, by a matter of coincidence or perhaps fate, a wolf howl erupts from within the deeply misty forest. Slowly, the silhouette of a bipedal wolf-like creature emerges from it as well. He shows them a paw, dripping with blood, and runs inside the mist. The duo try to set aside their mistrust for a while and give chase to the creature, due north. Although these five characters followed in different directions at different times, they met in the same road at the same time after piercing through a deep, heavy, grey mist. The weather, sunny and warm, was now rainy and sinister. Cold, wet, alarmed and still suspicious of one another, they sense the smell of rot in the air. And against their fair judgment, Brad and Ray decide to explore. They are met with nothing more than a long dead body with a letter in its torn clothes. They barely have the time to pick it up when they hear multiple howls in the mist, which announce the presence of a pack of wolves. <laughs>